If you want to learn how to do this natural crochet style, make sure you stay tuned. I have four packs of this braiding hair that was about $9.99 at my local beauty supply. I have a razor comb, which is what I will be using to help um, make the hairline look a lot more natural. Of course, I have just a regular crochet needle that was probably about a dollar or two at the local beauty supply. So for my braiding pattern, it was pretty complex. I have two side braids um, going around my entire head. Um, I definitely recommend where you see the gapping of my braids that you do not do the gap. I definitely recommend you going all the way around the perimeter of your head. And then in the middle, I do just have a middle part, of course, and then just some straight back corners. And right here where you see me point is where I would definitely recommend your braids to not gap like mine do on the side, right there in the front by like your edge by your ear. Definitely make sure that is one continuous braid around your head. That way your hair, when you put it up, is seamless. So here's the hair right out of the pack. I did not cut it for my style, but if you want to, you can definitely cut it in half or you know cut off a little bit if you wanted to do that. So here I'm just going to show you um, about what size piece I used to crochet the back of my hair. Um, in the back I did bigger pieces and then when I got up to the front I would do a smaller piece just because I wanted it to uh, blend more. Um, one way that I was going to do my hair was I was going to do a uh, seamless perimeter around my entire head. But then I realized in the back that was more complex, complicated than what I originally thought it would be. So I kind of just uh, let go of that um, intention. Now in the back, you definitely want to make sure that you space the uh, knots apart. However, since I was had the intentions of doing the um, knotless or seamless method around my entire perimeter, I kind of did the ones on this back braid very close together. But um, after I did this one braid, I kind of just spaced them all out all over my entire head. So this is me just checking in. This is what one pack looks like in my head. So this hair is really big, guys. If you don't want it this big, you definitely don't have to use four packs. You can definitely tone it down to maybe use two. You can also think about maybe spacing out your um, knots further apart. That way there's more gapping in the back and it won't become this full this fast. I'm sorry guys, but right here is when I kind of started to feel myself when I was looking at how nice it looked when I held the hair back. But right there is where you can see why I said you definitely make sure you have that braid as a continuous braid. That way you don't get that little part like I have right there. But I started to feel myself. I was like, this looks really good. You look really cute. So excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> so now we're going to start getting in on how we are going to do this knotless method on this front perimeter here. Um, I'm going to take, again, a smaller piece than I would have done in the back just because the smaller the piece, the easier it is for it to um, really go knotless and blend well. So this is about the density of the piece I would use. Again, we're going to, you know, insert the open hook under the hair. Place the hair on top of the hook. Close the hook. Pull it through. Take the loop we just made. Open it up as wide as we need to and insert one half of the unlooped end and pull it. In the front, I only use one knot just because it was easier and it looked better than when I did two knots in the front. But I definitely would recommend doing two to three knots throughout the entire rest of your hair, head the size on your part and on the perimeter, on the edge perimeter that it's going to be shown. So again, I'm showing you about what size of a piece I would use in the front of my head and then we're going to walk through how to do the knotless method again. So I'm going to take the crochet needle, I'm going to insert it open under my braid. And I'm going to put on the looped end of the hair and then close the hook. I'm going to pull that through the braid and then I'm going to take the looped end and pull one half of the loose end through the looped end and then pull it tight. Make sure in the front section guys that you do this as close to each other as possible. That way it's more uniform and more seamless. And guys, you cannot tell me that that does not look like it's coming out of my scalp. You cannot tell me that that does not look natural. And hopefully by now you understand the concept of how to do the knotless method. I will show you again, but I will not give you the verbal instruction. So watch, pay attention closely.
So in this clip, I'm just gonna give you um, a quick show of how far spaced apart I did the hair in the front of my head. Um, they weren't as far spaced apart as I did in the back. They were more like, a, maybe like a half inch apart from each other in the front. Okay, so now we're gonna get into how to do this part. Um, I've already started on it a little bit and I just wanted to finish it out with you guys. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did in the very front um, perimeter. We're gonna do the same thing right here in the middle. So we're gonna take a small piece and we're gonna take the crochet needle and insert it right under the braid. We're gonna take the loop end of the hair and place that on the hook. Then we're gonna close the hook. And then we're gonna pull that through back under the braid. And then we're going to take the looped end and we're gonna open it up as wide as we need to. Try not to open it too wide though. And we're gonna take one end of the loose end and pull it through the hoop, the loop. And we're going to pull that as tight as we can. And we're going to also make sure that one thing I did not see a lot of people say when they do crochet tutorials is when you're doing the knotless method, the end that you want the knot to be on is the end that you're going to insert the crochet needle on. So for instance, we're going to show you again in this video. So you see that for the braid on the left side of my head, I insert the needle on the left side of that braid because I want the knot to be on the inner side of that braid. So I'm gonna insert the needle right there on the inside of the braid because that's where I want my knot to be. Take the looped end of the hair, place it on the hook, close the hook, pull it back through the braid, take the looped end and the loose end, take one loose end and pull it through the looped end of the braid, of the hook loop, I'm sorry. And then we're gonna pull as tight as we can and you can see the knot is going on that side of the braid. Okay, so we're actually all finished. I did run out of hair right there in the very front. I need maybe like three or four pieces just to make it as full as I want it to be on the front. But I absolutely love this hair. I adore it. It's big, it's beautiful, it's soft to the touch. It's not crazy shiny, but it's definitely not dry. It might look dry, but the hair is really soft, guys. It's, it feels moisturized. Um, I didn't want to add any oil because I didn't want to weigh the hair down, but I love it, it's big, it's Diana Ross-ish, and I love it, that part looks great to me. Um, one thing I did forget to record is my self shaving down the perimeter to give yourself like, on the edge of your hair, the perimeter, your edges, they're always shorter. So I just shave those down to be about maybe two inches long at the most on that front perimeter braids on both sides. And this is me showing you where I ran out of hair. <laughs> I'm kind of just gonna lift the hair up to show you guys how like the knotless method looks on like the side braid. It looks really good. That's why I say to make sure that braid is continuous because you don't want to have that part like I do, sadly, but it's okay. Um, I love the hair. It's it's super 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 light, guys. And you can actually put heat on this hair, and that's what I did. I did the blow dryer on a low setting, and I didn't do it, but so close to the hair, I was probably like. A foot or you know at the most as close to the hair as possible just because I didn't want it to singe or burn or melt and I didn't blow dry it out right away I were I wore the hair like this for maybe like two to three weeks and then that's when I decided to blow dry it out um, I got a lot of compliments on this hair guys everyone who saw me because I normally do protective styles like braids or crochet styles so they don't really see my natural hair they was like oh my god I would have never have guessed your hair was this long it's beautiful, it's like big, it's wonderful, it's soft, like oh my God. Like even my family members, my mother, my sisters, it was like oh my God, I didn't know your hair was growing so long, like you need to help me with it. Like 
teach me what you're doing so that my hair can get like this. Like you are hair goals. I even posted a picture on Instagram. I got so much love and support. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you definitely try it out. If you do, leave a comment. Let me know how you felt about it. And see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye.